This video is about diabetes and the eye. Here are pictures of two different retinas. On the left is a nice looking normal retina. On the right is a retina showing significant signs of damage from diabetes. The obvious changes are the red spots, which are hemorrhages, but there's more going on, which we will talk about in this video. Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. This is part of a set of videos explaining diabetes and its effect on the eye. In previous videos, we discussed what diabetes was and how it led to complications, potentially throughout the body. In this video, we will focus specifically on the eye. Remember, this is for your general information and in no way replaces consultation with your doctor. Traditionally, diabetes has been defined as a disease based on poor control of glucose in your body. A more complete answer is that diabetes is more about insulin than about glucose. Either a decreased production of insulin or a decreased effect of insulin called insulin resistance. Either way, diabetes interferes with metabolism and is responsible for damage to tissues throughout the body. Tissue damage can come directly from elevated glucose and chemical byproducts of glucose. And in diabetes, there are other mechanisms of damage, for example, excess oxidation and increased systemic inflammation. So diabetes has widespread effects, the chief result being damage to nerves and blood vessels. Blood vessel damage comes in two varieties. First, damage to the capillaries, the small vessels that deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. These are the microvascular complications with damage to the retina, the kidneys, and peripheral nerves. Regarding the retina, diabetes is the leading cause of blindness between ages 20 and 70. Diabetes also causes atherosclerosis, thereby damaging and narrowing large blood vessels. That causes a significant increase in stroke, heart attack, and peripheral vascular disease. The general concepts of damage and diabetes are covered in more detail in the video segment on diabetes. Now let us concentrate on the eye. The retina is the main part we are concerned with in discussing diabetic damage to the eye. The retina is a layer of nerve tissue that lines the inside of the eye. It functions like film in a camera, sensing light and turning that into nerve impulses that travel along the optic nerve to the brain. This is what it looks like if we look through the pupil into the inside of the eye. On the right, the parts are labeled. Uh, you can see the optic nerve with arteries and veins branching out to supply the retina. The rest of what you see is the center part of the retina. The outer white ring denotes the macula, the part of the retina responsible for good central vision. The inner ring denotes the fovea, which has the best fine detail vision. In diabetes, damage to the retina can be divided into two categories. Category one is damage to the nerve cells that make up most of the retina. In this early stage, a decrease in nerve function precedes blood vessel damage. You can't see this by looking into the eye, but it can be measured by a number of tests like contrast sensitivity and color vision. Category two is damage to the blood vessels. This can be seen by looking into the eye. Progression of retinal damage is followed by monitoring the visible changes, which we will describe directly. Here again is a picture of the retina, this time magnifying a section to show capillaries carrying blood from an artery to a vein. In between, deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the retina. Damage to the capillary vessels makes them become weak and leaky. The weakness allows the vessel walls to bulge out in what are called microaneurysms, shown by the arrow. The yellow halo around the microaneurysm is serum leaking out of the vessel. If you let a sample of blood stand for a few minutes, you will see it separate into two halves, a relatively clear straw-colored part on top called serum and a lower half of red blood cells. When a leaky vessel allows the serum part of blood to enter the retina, that's called edema. It disturbs the functioning of the retina and reduces vision. Here is a picture of what we were just describing. The retinal photo shows several rings of small white spots. At the center of each of these rings is a microaneurysm leaking serum. The white spots are the lipids in the serum depositing in clumps, which we call exudate. 
When this leakage involves the center of the retina, it reduces vision and is called macular edema. Escape of red cells is clearly visible as retinal hemorrhage. In this photo, the hemorrhages are still quite small. Here is one more slide to show the connection between what you know is going on and what you see. The arrows are pointing to a leaking microaneurysm with surrounding edema, or exudate. As more damage happens to the capillaries of the retina, they eventually shut down. That means part of the retina is deprived of their blood supply and nerve cells start to die. What you see when that happens is a patch of retina that looks pale and swollen called a cotton wool spot. Also note there are more hemorrhages in this picture than the last. This is moderate retinopathy, a step worse than the last photo. Retinopathy becomes more ominous when it reaches the proliferative stage. As the cutoff of blood supply becomes more widespread, retinal cells start to secrete a chemical messenger, vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF for short, that stimulates growth of new blood vessels, which sounds like a good idea, but is actually bad. The new vessels are defective. They have a strong tendency to leak and bleed, which obscures vision and brings in scar tissue. Treatment starts with addressing the underlying problem. The retinopathy is telling us that diabetes is not under satisfactory control. While we have tools to treat problems as they arise, they will just return if the basic cause is not addressed. So half of the treatment plan is working with a doctor that's taking care of your diabetes. With that in mind, the photo on the left was our first photo of retinopathy before treatment. The arrow is pointing to one of several rings of exudate, which we know encloses a patch of edema. This was treated with a laser that was aimed at sealing the leaking microaneurysm at the center of the ring. The photo on the right was taken after treatment. After the microaneurysm was sealed, over time the edema was gradually absorbed and vision usually improves. Note the rings of edema have all cleared. The focal laser works well for localized leakage. However, when retinopathy has reached the point of new vessel growth, the strategy is different. Remember, when the capillaries close down, the new vessels are growing because of the chemical messenger VEGF. The traditional way to stop that process is to destroy the cells producing VEGF. That's usually done by applying widespread laser treatment on the order of thousands of spots, destroying the cells that are producing the VEGF. The arrows on the left are showing the optic nerve and macula. These are left untouched. Surrounding the macula, the white and dark spots are laser burns spread out over the peripheral retina. So a compromise is made. There is a sacrifice of peripheral retina with some loss of peripheral and night vision in order to save the more crucial central vision. More recently, medications have become available that can make the vessels go away often without that extensive laser treatment. You may have heard of Avastin and Lucentis. The downsides are that the medicine must be injected into the eye, and it must be done as a series of injections, weeks apart for an indefinite period. Lastly, this is a photo of a hemorrhage inside the eye. Details of the optic nerve and blood vessels are hazy because they are seen through a cloud of blood. If the hemorrhage doesn't clear relatively soon on its own, then a surgery is required to remove the blood along with the vitreous gel that fills the middle of the eye. Since blood brings scar forming elements with it, that often causes detachment of the retina. In this situation, clearing off scar tissue and reattaching the retina can be difficult to accomplish. In a previous segment on diabetes control and complications, we saw that overall damage can be, if not totally prevented, can be greatly reduced by paying attention to control of blood sugar, blood pressure, and lipids. To save vision, it's important to have regular dilated eye exams by someone experienced in retinal examination, at least once a year, more often if there are active changes going on.